Hello, welcome to my virtual talk on uh, the first UK comics creator survey. Um, probably not the last, we'll see, time will tell. Um, apologies for the, the, the quality of my video, my computer is very old, it did not anticipate having to rely on Zoom to communicate with the outside world. Um, but then who did? Anyway, so I'm going I'm to try and share my screen, go through my talk, bear with me. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, right. So this uh, this survey is uh, has recently been carried out. It was it was um, open in uh, April and May of this year. Um, an online survey available to to be filled in by anybody who who makes comics in the UK. All comics creators. Um, and the the reason I did it is because um, in 2017 I very noisily uh, decided that I, was, I announced I wasn't going to make any more graphic novels um, because I just I just fundamentally could not do it I just burnt out uh, the level of income versus the level of work is just it's not it's not feasible um, I'm getting old can't be doing that anymore <laughs> can't do that with my life so uh, move on so I, I announced it and then um, a lot of people who don't work in comics uh, oh hang on should be playing this there we go professional um a lot of people who don't work in comics got in touch to say um why don't i just work in marvel and uh work for marvel and make spider-man so thanks for that helpful strangers but a lot of people who did work in comics and do work in comics still got in touch to say you're right everything is terrible and so this that sort of got me thinking that maybe something should be done about it um and the way that i thought that we could start to change the situations to find out how bad the situation actually is you know get a get a proper the proper grasp of the situation so um about last year i uh, i got together some funding from the um, british council and the university of dundee and very much from the arts council in england thank you arts council england i say got it together it was a long and arduous process that's another story for another time but um they don't make that easy do they thanks guys um and uh together with sarah kenny and, and uh, charlotte bailey i um Put together this uh, design the survey itself because they they have they themselves they work in comics but also have lots of experience in working with different arts arts organisations different artists and uh, marketing and non profit organisations and that just that they knew what um, what kind of people needed to be able to be supported in a certain sector so they were experts holding my hands but holding my hands remotely because you know COVID. Mm. Um, and uh, employed the audience agency to, to actually make the survey, um, to host this online survey and then analyze the data and then put together the report at the end because they're professionals and you don't need me with a Excel spreadsheet trying to work this out. You know, you want this thing done properly. Um, so the, the uh, survey itself covered um, who we are and what we're earning for which sources, what barriers we're facing and what we need to be able to, su to succeed as comics creators. And also because it was 2020, there were also questions about uh, how the pandemic had affected people. Um, good time. So the, the link that you're seeing there, the, uh, um, it, that's where you'll find the, the full report itself. It's worth a read. It's long, but it's definitely worth a read because there's lots of interesting bits and pieces in there. Um, and also uh, further further reading, follow-ups, things, the uh, ways to continue the the conversation and join the campaign, um, which I'll you know I'll get to later. Um, so in the survey, one of the things that that uh, it covered was the demographics, which are all compared to the 2011 um, national census. Um, in terms of gender, more male than female, quite considerably, two thirds to a third, um, which you know I, I think we were kind of suspecting to be honest but a lot more genderqueer than uh, than was anticipated so well done us um also age wise we're uh, 68 percent of respondents were 44 and under which is compared to 47 percent nationally so we're quite young as a group um uh, our ethnic group in, in terms of ethnicity we are uh, 90 percent white compared to 87 percent nationally which is you know a bit, bit whiter than the average so some some work still needed not far off the national average but you know could could do better um one of the interesting things to me was that there were um i have latin heritage and there are three others that do making comics so uh excellent um 
In terms of sexuality, 69% are heterosexual compared to 95% in 2011, so a bit queerer generally. Also, I mean, just as an aside, in, in 2011, 95% straight, that seems... I, don't, I mean, I know I live in Brighton, but come on, that seems pretty straight to me. Um, there's some liars in there. Um, there were 21% who, who identified as deaf or disabled and, uh, and or had a long-term health condition, which is slightly higher than the average, which was 18%. So um, that's very interesting there. Uh, perhaps it speaks to the accessibility of comics, maybe, we can hope. Um, also included a question about, about class, which is uh, self-prescribed because we sort of wanted to make sure, we wanted to check the, the water and see that it wasn't turning into just a middle-class hobby. And it appears not, so good news. Um, I'll put an L. It's just nice to break up the data with some, some fun things. Um, also, compared to the uh, UK author earnings report in 2018, it turns out we are um, younger and less white and more male, just, just as an aside. Um, longevity. And, uh, the length of time that people have been working in comics. Um, there were 13% who've been working more than 20 years, which means that since that sort of t year 2000-ish, it's after that, but since that sort of 2000s boom, 87% um, of us have started working. So we're a very sort of young, uh, newish group. I mean, in terms of how long we've been working in comics, how long we've been uh, around, um, which is interesting. I'm going to keep saying things are interesting. I think they're interesting. You, it, I'll, leave, I'll leave that to you to describe to, for, your, for yourself, to decide, sorry. Um, and then career status, that was also self-prescribed. And um, so as you can see, they're most, mostly 63% current career. Um, and this was interesting because uh, there was, we asked how... Um, we asked people their occupation status, as you can see from the chart below, and it was interesting that, that only 23% uh, counted it as their main occupation and their primary source of income. And there's 14% for whom it's their primary occupation and not a primary source of income, which is, um, I think, speaks volumes to the, <laughs> to the level of income you can get from comics. Also, um, the bottom chart is all the respondents. So amateur slash hobbyists, creators, and those seeking career combined, that's 37%. Um, and people only making comics in their spare time is 48%, which means one in 10 comics creators are current career. They see it as their current career, but they're only able to do it in their spare time, which is pretty damning, I think. Um, also, as an aside, 87% of respondents receive income from one or more sources unrelated to their comics production. In case you're wondering, yes, I am reading notes. <laughs> Sorry to make it sound so clunky. It's statistics. Who can remember this kind of thing? Come on. I'm gonna, I, I went to art school. What do I know? Um, so this chart, there's a lot to break down, but I'll tell you the, the salient points. 44% uh, of respondents earn a thousand pounds or less from comics. 22% earn between 1,000 and 5,000. Um, there was a recent survey by the RSL, their room of my own survey in 2019, which surveyed writers of all mediums and 70% of them le earn less than 5,000 pounds. So at 66%, we're doing about, about as craply as all other writers. So that's good to know we're keeping pace with the race to the bottom. 15% um, are earning above 20,000 pounds, which we can consider livable wage. And 5% are earning above 50,000 pounds, which we can consider enviable wage. Um, so the direct and indirect, uh, so the, yeah, the, the, we sort of distinguish between direct and indirect income for comics. So direct was traditional publishing, self-publishing, web, web comics, commercial commissions, work for hire comics, periodic publications and licensing. And then indirect was workshops, talk, teaching, talks, teaching, private commissions and merchandise. So those two combined, the average income was 10,299 pounds. Um, from direct alone, so just solely from comics, it was 7,958 without all the uh, ancillary bits and pieces. Um, the range was from naught to 180,100 pounds, which um, in case you're wondering, that's, that's not me. That wasn't my income. It's fine. Uh, another owl for you there. Um, oh, I, I used my funding to, to ask uh, the fantastic Emma Kosh to do some, some nice infographics for us for, for social media. So this is one of those. Um, she pointed out that uh, only 18% of creators made money through work for hire, but it's the most valuable income source. So it's fruitful, but largely inaccessible. Um, 
and we also asked uh, whether um, if, if what do we ask? You can read that. <laughs> do you receive over fifty percent of your income directly related to your comic production from countries outside of the UK? and where that was from and overwhelmingly as probably was expected it was north america it was the states in particular but north america and um and around europe but some surprising ones in there iran who knew um so there were a lot of literal responses in to the, to the question um how do you feel about comics uh, or how would you describe your feelings about comics and the comics industry was the specific question and normally I've been told that by the audience agency that normally when people fill in these literal responses that there's normally they get about 50% of people responding this time 100% of people filled in the literal responses and I think that's because we care um, so the four main areas of concern were that comics is not paid in roughly like thematically speaking people didn't put these exact answers but thematically speaking comics does not pay a living wage Regular sources of income are extremely difficult to access. The comics audience is too small to sustain an industry and industry practices and professionalism need improvement. So these sort of four key areas kind of, they're all very interlinked, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, it, I, I urge you to read the report because there's, there's, the, the, there are a lot more literal responses in there and they're really interesting. To, to me and to everybody, if you have any interest in comics at all, to see what, what people are thinking, to sort of get a, a sort of a, a taste of the water. That's not a nice, that's not a nice analogy. You know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, how do you describe your feelings about comics and the comics industry? And there was, they produced a word cloud, and I thought you might want to see love. <laughs> that's how people feel. Love appears 196 times in the literals. Lovely appears eight times. And Lovecraftian appears once. So good to know. Um, so this is what we could do with the survey. I sort of came up with a list of, of potential uh, ways we can use all this, this handy data going forward um, specifically. So first of all, for us as, as comicers to know more about our community and our, identify our strengths and shortcomings and identify the, the steps we need to protect our industry and its creators. Um, to provide data for festivals, publishers and other comics endeavours for use in their own funding bids. And if you have use for this data, get in touch because um, uh, if the, the report itself doesn't cover the data you need, maybe I'll be able to, to um, check it out to, to, to analyse the data myself or pass you on to the right people who will be able to do that for you. Um, to uh, provide data for individual comicers who wish to make their own funding applications. So, for example, to prove they're part of an underrepresented group. Um, to tackle issues of diversity within comics, particularly in those areas deemed to be the main sources of income, work for hire, come on now, um, to make the case for the formation of a non-profit organisation which can advocate for comics and help to promote and build new audiences for comics, to refine the questions to be asked by future researchers and to identify areas which will present themselves for further study, and to prove to the arts world that we do indeed exist. Um, so the future plans for the, the use for this so far, I mean, at the time of recording this, um, the plan is to host uh, a series of online discussions where we can kind of begin talking about what we might be able to do with this information, how we can take this forward, uh, ways that, tangible ways that we might be able to make things better. Um, and unfortunately, by the time you're listening to this, they will have all happened, probably, mostly happened. But you can check it out. If you have a look on this, if you follow this website, this link here, um, they will, I'll put all the details up and, and you'll be able to see what discussions have happened, if there's any still coming up, where you might be able to uh, find out what we spoke about. If we talk about you, did we talk about you behind your back? You'll have to find out. Um, and I'm only, I, I'm assuming that by the time this has all come out, we've uh, solved comics and saved everybody. But um, who can, who can say? Who knows the future? Anyway, thank you for listening to my speedy talk. <laughs> Goodbye!